Yo, John Cam 77 here. You are now listening to What is Crypto Podcast. What is going on, everybody? What is going on? Welcome to another episode of the What is Crypto Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Nye. And today I have a very special guest on the line. I have John Kim. John Kim is an advocate of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and specifically an advocate, a very heavy advocate of Litecoin. He is the chief evangelist, one would say, of the Litecoin Foundation and has close ties with Charlie and many of the guys over at the Litecoin Foundation. And today we're diving into the conversation of what is Litecoin? Why is it different than Bitcoin? Who's Charlie Lee? And he tells us a little bit about the origin story of Litecoin. He talks a little bit about what adoption really means and how every single one of us can play a big or a small role in the process of getting cryptocurrency adopted. Quick little disclaimer, guys. This is not financial advice. We are not telling you to go out and buy cryptocurrency or sell cryptocurrency or whatever you do with your current cryptocurrency. We're not here to advise you on that. We're simply here to educate and share some information. And finally, guys, if you want to dive deeper into the conversation with us and get engaged, you can come to our Facebook group and ask specific questions to me, the host, or to any of our guests. If they aren't in there directly, I can forward them your questions. And finally, you can even do so via Twitter. If you do not use Facebook, just shoot us a message on Twitter and we will make that happen for you. All right, guys, let's tune in to what John Kim has to say. Tell me, what is Litecoin? It's like what I said about uh, Bitcoin, right? I think Bitcoin and Litecoin is, is intertwined. So Litecoin to me is the same thing. It's the way, the truth and the light, you know? And like I said before, it's a way for all people from all races and status to be set free from the banks and financial institutions that get you in debt and keep you in debt. It's the truth through code and math that exposes the corruption and manipulation of the greedy, fallible human beings who can and will use their centralized financial system and power to abuse the general population. It's the light of hope in the midst of darkness and despair that illuminates another path for the people to take back their sovereignty and leave a lasting legacy and freedom to the future generations. And because of that, because I believe Litecoin is not called Litecoin because it's lighter. I believe it's called Litecoin for a reason. And it's because it literally is a light in the midst of darkness and it will um, change many people's lives and free uh, many people around the world who are debt slaves. And what's the origin story of Litecoin? Like, can you share with the audience a little bit about who Charlie Lee is, etc.? Yeah, so Charlie Lee was involved in Tenebrick. It was an altcoin, but it had a, a lot of pre-mine. Um, the uh, creator was um, unknown, and um, Charlie was involved in that, and he didn't like the way that they were going. So um, after that, it was Fairbricks. Fairbricks was forked off of, um, of Tenebrix, and it was trying to be a fair altcoin, but it had too many bugs because it uh, forked off of Tenebrix, which also had many bugs. So in experiencing all the greed and and the scams that these two coins were trying to do for a money grab um charlie um looked at bitcoin source code which was um basically why fix something that's not broken so he copied the source code changed a little bit the quantity and the the algorithm and launched litecoin in a fair way just like uh, bitcoin so that it doesn't benefit the creator or the people who have pre-mined. So I believe Litecoin is the standard for how an altcoin should be launched. But it's pretty impossible now, right? Because, you know, proof of work, like Bitcoin and Litecoin proof of work system flew under the radar because uh, no one no one really cared or had interest. But to pull off a real proof of work coin these days is pretty much impossible because there's too much interest and eyes on it. So Litecoin being eight years, 100% zero time, 100% uptime, running flawlessly. I think people fail to realize how important of a feat that is for any blockchain or any company to be that robust and to be that reliable. And what was the initial purpose of Litecoin? And, and is that the same purpose as, as it is still serving today? In the beginning, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and try to 
make Litecoin more than what it was. It was something that Charlie did for fun because he wanted to find the best way, the, the most fair way to launch an altcoin and not not do it on some other buggy code. But you know, Bit- he realized how important Bitcoin code was and how brilliant it was. So he cloned it. It's the silver to Bitcoin's gold. So what people don't really grasp is the fact that we have different, you know, algorithm right like bitcoin has shot 256 which is dominant there we have script algorithm which we are 98 percent dominant in that algorithm and we do not compete for miners we did not use uh bitcoin like you know we, we didn't use the bitcoin brand to gain validity we called it litecoin because we realized that it's not bitcoin it's a little brother of bitcoin and um it's four times faster and and the transaction fees are um, a little bit less right a lot less like abra right abra runs on Bitcoin, but whenever the fees get crazy during the next bull run, they're going to go back to the Litecoin blockchain for smart contracts because um, they, they just can't run a business with the fees being so high. And even in the adoption movement, we go out and we push for adoption and, and business to accept Litecoin. But every business that we ever done to accept Litecoin, they automatically get Bitcoin uh, along with it. So our boots on the ground efforts are for Litecoin, but at the same time for Bitcoin. So in every way, Litecoin truly supports and complements uh, Bitcoin, whether it's activating Sagwit first and Charlie Lee putting up a million dollar bounty to make sure that it is safe to go on Bitcoin. And, you know, now we have the Lightning Network, which prerequisite is to have the segregated witness. So um, we take a lot of code uh, and merge it into Litecoin from Bitcoin. And um, we understand that how important Bitcoin uh, developers are to our to Litecoin. So we take the initiative to implement SegWit and other things to make sure that it's safe to go on Bitcoin. So I believe in theory and in practice, uh, Litecoin really does complement Bitcoin in every way. And I know you're a big proponent of not just holding, but also utilizing cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, etc. Man, what does adoption mean to you? Okay, so I think some some of the people are taking me in it, taking what I say in the wrong way, right? I believe 90 to 95% you should hodl, right? Because it's the store of value, right? Like we're in, we're in the transition period where... Mu- where dollar is is just being devalued every day and Bitcoin and Litecoin are going to be, you know, just continuing to go up if you look at the charts. So it's it's definitely a store of value, but I just believe that you can buy a cup of coffee. Whenever we talk to businesses and set them up with accepting Litecoin and Bitcoin, they accept it so that we can use it, right? So we can help them to get more business. So all I've asked from my community was to buy a cup of coffee or buy a t-shirt here and there. And not only did I ask, I spent my own Litecoin and Bitcoin in other places 10 times more before I even asked people to just buy one cup of coffee. And even when I asked them to buy a cup of coffee, I sent them $5 in Litecoin code so that they can buy and purchase coffee. So I don't like people putting pressure on me to do something. And I don't like to put pressure on people to do it. Into the real world, me, Johnny Litecoin, the East Coast team, we're being rejected. I used to park in the businesses and leave and come back around and park and get out, get back in, leave. Because I, I was so sick of being rejected. So what am I trying to say is that like with Speed and App and other apps, they made it so easy for people to spend a little bit of their uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin to help adoption movement, to help use case. And another beautiful thing that comes out is that whenever you use it, there, there's a paradigm shift in your brain. Because you can talk about store value and use case all you want, but the day that you go out into uh, Nordstrom or Dunkin' Donuts or you know Express and buy something with Litecoin, like there's a paradigm shift that happens because behavior and action form habits, and collection of habits become paradigms. So whenever you do a different action or behavior or change, there's something that happens within your brain that can only happen through experience. And I just want people to experience the fact that what they're holding is just not a speculative asset, but it really can purchase real world goods and services. And that's what I was trying to target. But people are trying to make it a debate about SOV versus I went out. It isn't. It's just a cup of coffee. It's like what when, when Iverson said, come on, man, it's practice. It's practice, right? So all I'm saying, it's coffee, man. It's coffee. Coffee. 
Shout out to our sponsor, B21. B21 is a mobile app and a crypto on-ramp to invest in cryptocurrency assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. It is your personal wealth manager for all your crypto assets. The goal with B21 is that it allows you to invest in a few clicks. No more complex passwords, keys, wallets, or tech talk. Just set your goal, choose your crypto asset, and you are ready to go. B21 is easier than any trading platforms on the market today. You don't need any trading experience to get started or to get involved with cryptocurrency. You simply choose from the available coins and tokens, you set your investment goals, and you easily monitor all the progress. You can even set up reoccurring investments to draw from your bank or your debit card every single month. Head over to B b21.io to join the waitlist b21.io celsius network they are doing some really really cool stuff trying to revolutionize the way we think about the financial world and financial services celsius offers 10% annual interest on all crypto deposits and there's no secret to how they're doing it that 10 percent comes from them sharing 80 percent of their profits rather than the point zero 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 one percent that banks choose to share celsius is giving each user ten dollars in bitcoin when they make their first 200 deposit or more in crypto or stable coins when they use the promo code NYE. These guys are working hard to revolutionize the way we look at the financial world and they're taking on the banks. I'm personally a huge fan of what Celsius is building, so dive over to celsius.network to learn more and to use your promo code NYE in order to get $10 in BTC when you make your first deposit of $200 or more. Litecoin is also recently beginning a little heat and FUD around the proposed lack of development and things like that. What's going on with that? Is this something that's legitimate or is this something that's just completely FUD and and uh, just built built up by the haters? Well, here's a couple of things, right? Everybody's trying to develop on their own blockchain, right? They got this great team of people and they're they're investing in these developers and trying to make their blockchain more uh, robust and be acknowledged as a great blockchain. But what people don't really understand is this. Litecoin after Bitcoin is the most liquid cryptocurrency out there. So just on that fact alone, people are not going to just not buy it because it's on every exchange. And it's been running flawlessly for eight years, right? And no other blockchain can ever say that they've been running eight years flawlessly since its inception. Even Bitcoin had to do a reorg. You know about Ethereum and the DAO. So that being said, what's wrong with our development when the Litecoin blockchain is running flawlessly since 2011, right? In the, in the Litecoin Foundation, we have Charlie Lee, we have Jingjing, which is which he, he's a coder and developer. Charlie Lee is a full stack developer and coder. He's been coding since nine years old. He, he, he does front end and the back end, he does everything. He worked for Chrome, right? Google and helped with YouTube mobile, uh, Play Store. Uh, literally was one of the three people hired at, at Coinbase to become head engineer so that we can literally buy Bitcoin easily, right? So like we have this guy on our team where at any point at any time, he can just wipe his hands and get back to work. And we have Adrian Gallagher, who is our main developer right now. And he takes a lot of Bitcoin code and merges it into Litecoin. So it's not just crazy FUD. It's just taking something and trying to do clickbaits. But at the end of the day, the reality of Litecoin's reliability for eight years running flawlessly is the only thing that they're failing to realize and to understand. And that's, look, in the real world, it's not about what you say. Show me the result. Show me your history. Show me what you got. That's what matters in the real world. And what I can show you is the result of eight years of reliability. And you guys have to also know that Litecoin Foundation was started 2017, which is only two years old. And Litecoin 
has been running flawlessly <laughs> before Litecoin Foundation was even formed. So this development thing is to target Litecoin Foundation and to create FUD, which it's not sticking. It's not sticking at all. Good answer, man. I like that. And bring it back to something a little bit lighter. Can you tell us a little bit about the chicken? Like what is what is the chicken thing about and what are the Vegeta memes about? Well, I'm not I'm not very clear, right? Because I haven't been in this space for a long time, but um I heard that it's it's from like an old show where a chicken he just he goes he has this power ups and and he just goes ballistic. And at that time when when I think when Litecoin used to go from like one dollar to two dollar or something in a hundred percent increase and and somebody was talking about that chicken and it kind of stayed that way it's, i think it started on reddit and um it kind of stayed that way but i don't know the details don't quote me on it i don't do reddit that's what i heard and that's all i can say about that and about vegeta like i'm not a i don't ever watch cartoons i think charlie is really big into um dragon ball and Goku and Vegeta is like, they're always kind of competing with one another. But at, at the same time, they come together for the greater good. So I think uh, there's a deep message in there that kind of um, that kind of supports the role that Bitcoin and Litecoin has in this uh, in this crypto game. Hell yeah, man. Love me some Dragon Ball Z. Then you should know more than me, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I, yeah, the, Vegeta's a good one, man. It's hilarious. <laughs> So do you see any similarities between uh, Vegeta and Goku and Bitcoin and Litecoin? I, I I never thought of it before like that. I do like that a lot. That's that's a that's a cool example. Um the Vegeta meme that I like the most is uh in I think it was either the first episode or I maybe not the first episode, but it was definitely the first season of Dragon Ball, the original Dragon or no, excuse me, Dragon Ball Z. Um Vegeta uh watched Goku's power level spike above 9000 and uh that's kind of where the fem- famous meme comes from of over 9000 when bitcoin goes over 9000 everybody uh, oh. posts posts the vegeta meme because in the show uh Vegeta's looking through his radar at Goku and say, and watching the power level spike above 9,000. And like previously, the power levels were like 100 to 300 were like very large power levels. And uh, out of nowhere, Goku's level spikes over, over 9,000 and Vegeta freaks out, which is kind of where the, the Bitcoin meme comes from. That's my favorite one. Bro, what are the similarities, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool, man. It is pretty cool. <laughs> and, Go- and, and, and Goku is the leader, right? He's like the main character. Goku's the main character, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> uh, and as we kind of wrap this up, I got one more question for you, my man. Yeah. And I think this, I think you're probably the best person to answer this question. Yeah. What can we do as a community to help Litecoin and to help Bitcoin? Well, number one, I think Antonopoulos is a very great example on how to be a good Bitcoin maximalist, right? It's not to tear down other people and other projects and not call everything a scam because scam by definition is when they're trying to do something to hurt you and to trick you right but there's many projects out there that may end up not working just like in in the real business world a lot of the businesses fail but did they set out to become a scam i I think a lot of people had good intentions and goodwill and some just fail because it just doesn't work and i just think that the bitcoin community could have a little bit more mercy and understanding um because at the end of the day, we're not fighting each other. We're fighting the banks and the centralized entities, right? And um, they're basically doing the same thing that Jamie Dimon's and, and Warren Buffett are doing to Bitcoin. So it's the same spirit. It's not what you say. It's the spirit in which we, in, in which you say it. And the spirit behind a lot of these Bitcoin maximalists are very mean-spirited. I think that needs to be dealt with. It's not going to go away because they're set in their ways. Their ego level is is so high that they can never, ever be wrong, even though their brain is only capable of understanding a little bit compared to the size of this world and the information that is out there. So that, and then number two is that, look, man, there's so many people on Twitter and social media that gets the followers and when their followers go up, they use their followers to make money, right? What happens if many of the true influencers in this space, led by example, 
and didn't ask anything of their followers until they were practicing it first, right? And for me, it's it's I feel like uh, Twitter is a text message, uh, like open source text message with the world. And sooner or later, you're either going to be caught or you're going to be called out. So I, I believe the most valuable asset in the next five years will be trust. So I just hope that if Bitcoin and Litecoin is called the truth protocol and you really believe in it, there has to be something that happens deep within you that values truth over corruption and manipulation. And if that's the reality, then everything you do has to come from a place of authenticity and honesty. So am I advocating that you can't make mistakes? No, I, I make plenty of mistakes every day, but it's it's being able to own up to it and to um, and to look at yourself in the mirror and to to be able to say to yourself, I'm really trying my best to be uh, helpful and to be honest and to be truthful as much as possible. And if you can do that, everything you do is going to be great because at the end of the day, people are not dumb. They will. They know the fakes from the uh, scammers right? or, or the tr- people who are really trying to be as authentic and honest as possible. And action speaks louder than words, right? So it's called cryptocurrency. It's not called crypto store value, which means it's it's not either or, but it's both and, which means you have to huddle, yes, and it will change your life. But when you spend, it changes other people's lives and it affects the economy and it affects the paradigm shift of the people who think this is used for nefarious purposes and it's just a speculative asset. When you go out into the real world and talk to people, they have been programmed by the mainstream media to believe Bitcoin is a bad thing for the society and for people. And in order for you to undo that programming, uh, it will take more than you explaining to them about the Fed and the blockchain. It will take a true action, an experience, an experiential knowledge of how a transaction works and let the conversations come up organically so that you can have a decent conversation where you chip away at the programming that has been done by the mainstream media instead of arguing and debating your way into people. Because what that does, it makes people play defensive, right? It it closes their hearts. So I believe the only way that we can go forward in helping Bitcoin and Litecoin is more people, excuse my friends, get off their asses and go into the real world and show the world that this Bitcoin and Litecoin is not only a store of value or a speculative asset, but real money that can purchase real goods and services in this world that's going to change the trajectory of the destiny of the regular people in this world in the future. I love it, my man. Thank you for coming on the show, brother. You're welcome, brother. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the What is Crypto podcast. John's an awesome guy. He's a good friend of mine, and I really appreciate the fact that he dove in and he even addressed some of the FUD around Litecoin without getting over emotional or angry, you know. There's a lot of community members that will just instantly fight you or instantly attack you based upon whatever it is that you don't like or you may FUD about their coin or their specific company. So guys, what I want you to do today is I want you to D-Y-O-R, do some of your own research. I want you to go look up or watch a YouTube video, either one, about Litecoin. Learn about the differences, learn about the supply, learn about the different things that happen. And beyond that, I want you to come into the Facebook group. I want you to share one thing that you learned about Litecoin after watching your video or reading your article. You guys can join the Facebook group by going to whatiscrypto.com. There are links there. And finally, guys, please leave us a five-star review. Please leave us a comment. Please leave us a subscription on iTunes. It would mean a lot to us. Again, guys, I'm Michael Nye, and I'll catch you next episode.